Hello and welcome back to the blush studio. Today I'm going to walk you through redoing my watercolor palette. So a few weeks ago I decided to just kind of scrap everything in my watercolor palette. I got a bunch of new paints and was gifted some paint so it just seemed like the perfect time to make everything fresh. So without further ado, let's get started. The first thing I did is I swatched every single color that I had. I swatched my old colors, I swatched my new colors, I just wanted to see what I was working with. That way I knew for sure what the underlying tones were and I didn't have to work off of my memory or just what my instinct told me. After that I laid everything out in a row and started to mess with it on my palette, trying to get the order correct. Uh, to be honest, the big thing for me was placing the reds. I really wanted the reds to be at the top of the palette. That's just really where I like them to be, where my hand goes. And so I kind of tried to rearrange everything else th so that that could be up there. So I messed around with the placement. I actually didn't get it right, um, but I played with it for about two days. Then I started to put everything in to the palette when I thought I was ready to commit um, one of the paints tubes busted on me but I'm just filling these up making sure that there's plenty in there and when I got to the brown I realized no this is not gonna work I don't use brown a lot um, I usually mix in a compliment if I want a brown so I used the palette knife and some toilet tissue and I moved everything over so I could get the browns on the edge of the palette because again I'm just not going for them so it doesn't really make sense for them to have that upper spot which to me is just kind of I don't know, it's primary. I'd really rather have my reds there instead because I'm using red a lot, whether I'm working just with greenery or with flowers, red is pretty much always going to be on my palette, um, whether it's to desaturate or it's the star of the show. So I moved the browns down. Um, I'm using my palette knife to kind of mush everything down once in a while. Um, this is just because, I don't know, I just like everything to look really good. It just really bugged me that I had to move the paint over and kind of ruin that. Um, even though it's a paint palette and it's going to be completely destroyed shortly after I finish putting everything in. But for me, it was kind of important and I'm glad that I did it, actually. So now that the reds are all set in the way that I want them to be, I'm going to start putting everything else down. But I actually ended up switching these yellowy and muted golden tones a little bit um, before I actually placed them all. I don't think, other than the yellows, there was any other switching around. But it did take a little while to get the palette exactly how I want it to be, and I can honestly say that I love this setup. So I have the blues down at the bottom, the greens and the yellows on the side, and the reds at the top. Colors that I don't use as much, like the pinks and the browns as aforementioned, are farther off to the side just because I'm not going for them as much, so I don't need them to be front and center. As I was filling each individual pan, I made sure to keep the original paint tube right next to it so I was able to take this reference photo. Um, I'm able to use this as I'm creating a reference sheet and refer back to it when I'm refilling the paint as it goes out. And for our top row, it is important to note that this is upside down in most of my videos, but I wanted you to be able to see the paint for yourself. We have Winsor & Newton's Burnt Sienna, Burnt Umber, followed by PM & Tight by Daniel Smith. Then Daniel Smith's Deep Scarlet, Windsor & Newton's Alizarin Crimson Hue, Cadmium Red Hue, Deep, and then Cadmium Red Pale Hue, and then Cadmium Orange Hue. Going down the next side, we have Cadmium Yellow Hue, again that's Windsor & Newton, the Lemon Yellow Hue, which is one that I've used quite a bit recently, Yellow Ochre and Raw Sienna, followed by Terre Verte in the Yellow Shade, and Sap Green. Next is Hooker's Green Dark and Daniel Smith Jadeite there on the end. Down at the bottom we have Windsor & Newton's Veridin Hue, Intense Blue, Ultramarine, and then Daniel Smith's Mayan Blue Genuine, Blix Indigo, Daniel Smith's Amethyst, and Daniel Smith's Rodinite. So that's my new palette set up. Again, I started off with just like, okay, how do I need this to work for me being a YouTuber and filming tutorials? And then like, where do I want my colors to be? Just based off personal preference and I worked from there. Um, again, I'll have all of the paints that I have, including the paint tray and the paint brushes linked down below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and comment down below with any requests for future videos. And don't forget to subscribe, that helps me out a lot. Um, until next time, happy painting!